let's start with France, Europe's high school bully. <laughs> For weeks now, France has been in turmoil. Fires across France. One protester telling us this is a war. Hundreds of thousands taking to the streets the historic unrest sparked by President Macron's plan to raise the retirement age from 62 to 64, ramming the measures through his country's legislature without a vote. In Paris, where bins and newspaper kiosks have been set alight, some firefighters put out the flames. Others joined in with the protesters. It's true, people are so pissed at what Macron's been doing that firefighters have started siding with fire instead of him. <laughs> And it's honestly kind of jarring to see fires in Paris that were started by something other than their usual cause, the explosive heat generated by Ina and Jeffrey's relentless fucking at their Parisian apartment. <laughs> now, Macron claims that without this move, which, remember, he's pushed through without a vote, the government will accrue massive debts. But his opponents argue that pension funding can come from other sources, like raising taxes on the wealthy. And look, a retirement age of 62 is low, even by the standards of Western nations. In Germany, the comparable retirement age is 65. In Italy, it's 67. And in the US, the retirement age is no. <laughs> so, France is lucky to have the kind of bold social welfare policy that's getting rarer nowadays, but that is probably why they are fighting so hard to protect it. And I will say, these protests have brought out moments that are just quintessentially French. Take a look at this viral video from France. Diners in the city of Bordeaux unfazed by demonstrators protesting against recent changes to the retirement age. Even with a raging fire nearby, these people are still managing to enjoy their wine and conversation at an outdoor cafe. Wow, that is on brand. I think it is safe to say that after a nuclear holocaust, the only creatures left standing will be cockroaches and an outlandishly relaxed, wine-sipping French couple <laughs> entirely unfazed by the obliteration of society. And the protesters themselves have sometimes bordered on magnificent self-parody. <laughs> Holy shit! Someone call une ambulance. I think I just overdosed on Frenchness. <laughs> That's honestly intimidating for me to watch because she's doing everything that I can't do there. Dance, look cool in sunglasses and rock bangs. Literally <laughs> nothing she's doing will ever be possible for me and it makes me a little sad. Now, France's Constitutional Council is expected to rule on Macron's plan on April 14th, but he doesn't appear willing to back down in the meantime, as even the one concession his government made to protesters was pretty insulting. The government's agreed to dialogue, but not any kind of dialogue about doing a U-turn on the policy. That, they say, is simply not going to happen. Well, hold on. We're open to a dialogue, just not the kind you want. <laughs> so what would you even talk about, then? <laughs> Thank you, protesters, for agreeing to meet with me. Do you think soup and stew are different things, <laughs> or...? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> The point is, Macron may need to rethink his strategy here because these protesters aren't going to back down anytime soon. The French people are clearly going to keep fighting for their quality of life, and if this week is any indication, they're going to continue looking pretty fucking cool while they do it. 